Hey guys, welcome back to part number two of my 30 second scale Zuki Mora BF109 build. This week we're going to work on the cockpit. Hey, welcome back. So hopefully you caught last week and you saw the beautiful engine and I'm just itching to get started on this one. So next up, we're going to follow instructions for an order is going to be the cockpit. So as I mentioned last time around, it's nice because it tells you exactly how many parts are in each um, section and what it looks like when we're done. So the motor is 66 parts and we have a mere 45, I think, on this one. Yeah, 45 parts. Um, so again, here's all the parts we're going to need. And um, again, this is what the section we're working on. So by the time we're done with this chapter, basically, we're going to look like this, hopefully, or maybe a little bit better. Um, so going for instructions, get the thing going here. So not as complicated as the engine. There's a lot less fiddlier parts and um, I think less painting because a lot of this is going to be the same color we can paint at once. So we've got cockpit floor going in here. And um, again, you've got the paint colors at the bottom here and you've got the paint callouts down the right and you've got various views. So although it looks, looks very intimidating, these instructions, it's only three or four parts per page. It's just a very nicely laid out um, way of doing it. Adding some more detail to the cockpit tub, um, just carrying on here. And um, looks like we're going to work with the ammo box for the cannons. They all get kind of sandwiched together. A fuel transfer pipe goes in, um, some framing. More framing. Um, and then putting us all together, adding the ammo, ammo box and the instrument panel. A couple of options here by the looks of it, um, which we'll get to when we get there. And that. Oh, there's another page. And then we're going to bring side brackets and a fuel tank added. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm doing this one fully open as much as possible. So I don't want to like frame a lot of these panels. Um, I'm not going to use. So I want it open so you can see this beautiful detail here. So bear that in mind as we go through here because um, definitely want to showcase this amazing kit. So that's kind of what we got ahead of ourselves um, here. And I've actually gone ahead and done the first page already. I was very eager. And... Um, this is what we got. So I've, all these are the same color pretty much. So I've glued the, these parts together. You can see that beautiful detail. And this is the um, the back wall. And this actually um, is a different color. So we're going to paint this one separately. But if you see when I put this together, how well it fits. It's quite awesome. So uh, like that. So, that back wall is going to go on and then the seat um, is going to be a different color too. So we're going to paint all this stuff separately um, and the seat will just kind of fit in kind of like that. So already you can see kind of detail we've got going on here. So I'm going to start um, working way through here. Got some more pieces to add and then we get this thing in the paint. But um, yeah, no problems at all. Just following the instructions step by step as, as we did last week. And um, it's just falling together. It's just a beautiful kit. Highly recommend it. And it's going to look pretty awesome hopefully when it's done. So I'm just going to keep plodding on here. Again, nothing really important from the first page. Everything just went together as planned and it's looking pretty good. All right, so take a little pause here. I'm almost ready for paint, but I've got to go over this amazing detail on here. Um, it, it's blowing my mind. So I don't know if you can see on the camera, but let's look at the, the rudder pedals. You see that? How Amazingly detailed. So this is all going to be pretty much the same color. So we can spray this at once. Um, the side panels, there's going to be there's going to be instruments and stuff and buttons we'll paint separately. But just it falls together and just look. And then, oh, while I was fumbling, like fumbling around a minute ago with a seat, I, if you notice, I put this the wrong way around. This was facing inwards. This wheel right here needs to be facing outwards. So I just took it off and um, put it in the correct position so there's room for the seat. That's why it didn't fit. Um, it says an error on my part. I just put it wrong. But just look at that detail in there. And again, I don't want to put too much together because I'm, I don't have a problem fitting it. So I'm trying to keep, you know, give me some safety. Um, again, detail on that. So, some of this stuff, you know, it slots in together. So I just wanted to kind of, again, slow the roll, get this painted up, and then we'll get it put together. So another thing that blows your mind here is this guy, this um, fuel transfer pipe. And it's, oh, now I was looking all over the box what is sprue o and sprue o is a clear part and lo and behold here is the pipe 
And I'm like thinking to myself, why is it in transparent color? Are we have to like paint it like a clear yellow or something? I, I wasn't getting it. And I read the instructions and it all makes sense. There's a fuel transfer pipe from the drop tank on the right side of the cockpit, transparent in the middle. This is to check visually if the drop tank is empty without using any instruments. If there is no fuel level gauge on the drop tank, as there is no fuel level gauge on the drop tank pipe. And if you look at the picture here, I'm not sure why you can see on the camera, there is a little tiny little clear part where they can look into and see if there's fuel flowing through the pipe. And it's modeled right here. So again, amazing details. So what I'm gonna do here is just mask that little area off, paint it pipe yellow. When I peel the mask off, we'll have that clear part still as of here. We can actually see the um, the fuel running through. So again, just attention to detail, unless it's just second to none. It's I'm blown away. My first ever Zuki Mori kit. I might be going online um, after this and um, buying some more because this is just um, on a whole nother level. I'm just speechless. So I'm going to start, got to a stage now where 90% of this cockpit's kind of assembled and um, now it's time to get some primer and paint before we can kind of move on. So I'm going to get to spray booth and I'll be right back. All right, so I want to get you up to speed of where I'm at here. So all this stuff is primed and pre-shaded and the usual, this is a surface of 1500 black. Let it dry, which not very long. Um, mix 50-50 of lacquer thinner and then come back with some regular white XF2 and um, just light low air pressure, just mist it all on and um, create that shadow coat um, highlights. And it's also known as Xenophil highlighting. Um, you've seen me do it a gazillion times before if you're a follower of the channel. So all different parts have been done with this um, that way. The fuel tank I paint is going to be black um, and I just, there's a seam around where the two parts join. So I just added some Tamiya putty let it dry, I'll sand it back, and then I'll go again with some more primer. Um, Cause you're gonna see it. Cause again, mine's gonna be opened up. So did that. Um, this guy, I'm not sure it's gonna work at all, but there's two parts here that should be black. So before I sprayed in white on here, I put some masking fluid on um, those two areas, which is drying right now. And then my plan is to spray it and you know, clean it. And this area right here, I put masking fluid. And then hopefully when I peel it back, um, the black will still be there and it saves me hand painting it later. So just a little bit extra saving some work there. Okay, the ammo right here. So I didn't put the ammo in here. I'm painting it separately. It makes it a lot easier. So paint again black, Mr. Surface at 1500. And then what I did was with some brass, I happen to have Mr. Mr. Uh, Metal Brass 219, any brass color, it's a beautiful color. Um, but a flat brush, dipped in the paintbrush, wiped off the excess and then just, just dry brushed and took out, because they're all raised, it picked them out very nicely. And you can see all the individual ammo on there. So yeah, just basically just dry brushing um, these guys. Just look at it right now. Okay. And then finally um, to talk about is this guy. Remember the transparent hose I was raving about? So what I did was, um, some one mil masking tape, cut it down even smaller, and the clear part I masked up, um, primed the whole thing in black, and then there's like a clamp each side, the clear part, and the clamp right there, where I masked over um, the black. So clear, master clear, sprayed it black, and masked those three pieces of the black, and then came back with the white over the top, because the yellow is going to cover a lot better of a white than it will black. Um, what I do now is I'll spray that yellow, and then when I peel back all that masking tape, I'll be left hopefully with the clear part, and the three black clamps showing underneath um, like that. So it's just easy to little tip painting that little guy. And that's kind of where we're at. So I'm gonna let this guy dry a little bit more, come back, put the main paint down, various colors, um, you know, per the instructions, and we can start detail painting, get this thing put together. All right, so working along here, as you can see, we're looking great, very detailed. Um, you can see the, the little clear part, you can see you know, the fuel running through um, all the detail and then all dry brushing. Fantastic. But with all this detail, they forgot one thing. Well, they haven't included one thing. And that is the harnesses. There's no seatbelt harnesses, whether it be decals or fabric or photo etch. There's nothing in here. So, huh. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I'm going to get this put together first and a fuse large and then see what space we have. If I can run some like HGW fabric straps back or we're gonna make your own. We'll do something, but it will take care of that later date. But just beware that there is no there are no straps, harnesses. Huh. Also, um some work we've done here. Painted those the ammo. The bullets looking really good. But guess what? 
this sits on there and you don't see them anymore. So there's no point in painting those. Um, you have to install this. Um, it's not that you can leave it off. So this goes on here and you're not going to see it. And another thing which I was going to talk about, I've got my circle template out here and um, back here before I attached it to simply you know, apply it as we do like, um, like armor wheels, put it over the top, spray it gently and it leaves a perfect you know circle. But it looks fantastic, don't get me wrong. But again, this guy sits there. You don't see it. So lots of things we're doing here, we're hiding, we're doing the work and you know get it done, but you don't see that. So just bear in mind um, some of the stuff. I'm having to open this side, I think. So you know you will see all this, but obviously when it's covered like that, you're not gonna see it. So that's where we're at with that, looking really good. Um, Little parts added on. I think that's where maybe the gear starts coming off here. Um, various parts going on. Um, and yeah, so we're all, re all we're really left is putting the top on here and then the instrument panel. And instrument panel, we have two options. First one is, to, is as I've done here, is to take part N25 and paint it. And then there's actually two options. You, you can apply one big decal for all the instruments or just apply them in individually. Now there's only 20 decals. So I'm just gonna do them individually because I think it'll look better. So I'm doing it that way. And then to create a glass effect, I'm gonna use as always Mod Podge Super Gloss Brilliant Extreme, which dries like glass. So we'll put all decals on, let them dry, and then put a little bit on this on each one, like a bulge, and it will then create like a glass look. So that's what I'm gonna do. The other option is we have a clear part and you can mask off all the clear parts um, which is a lot of work, maybe some masking fluid and spray it, take, take the masks off and you should be left with, you know, that kind of thing. And then you put a decal from the inside, um, which will look good too. But that seems a lot of work and really tricky masking to get all these nice. So I think it's gonna be better just the way I've done it, where you paint it and um, just put the decals on the top. Now, one thing to note is I've spent time painting all this, but then you turn it over to the next page and there's a tiny little switch that goes on here. Oh, not camera shot. So just make sure you put G32 onto your your thing before you paint it, because otherwise, like I had to do, I just had to just, now it's created some extra work, so I have to get the airbrush out, paint that tiny little part, and then super glue it on. Um, yeah, what well, I could have just done it first. So just be aware, mindful of the second page, you're gonna have to um, add that little switch right here. Um, also, I think once you get to this page 20, be very careful in the instructions, and just, as it says, follow it in order fit two in order. So make sure you fit these parts in, in the order they come. Otherwise, you can have some fit issues, I think. Just make sure you follow the instructions. So I think we're all getting there. We're doing a pretty good job. Um, like I said, bummer about the harnesses, but no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and start um, getting decals put on the instrument panel and getting some of these other parts put together. And um, we're almost done, actually. So probably maybe one more little section and we'll be finished. So yeah, let me get working with that one and I'll be right back. All right, so I realized I forgot to talk about the colors. So I glued a couple more parts on, um, glued this guy first, then the bulkhead goes on, and then this guy. Um, so that's all glued on. I'm just a little concerned it's not quite level. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that. I guess we'll see when we fit it. It just kind of bows a little bit. I'm not sure it'd be a fitment issue down the road or if it's supposed to be like that. But anyway, so painted it up and I should talk about the, um, the colors, I guess. Now the black, on the front here. I don't like, as you know, I don't like using pure black, so I use rubber black. LP65 or XF65. The under the side here and um, this front bit section, same as the um, the engine mount, and that was um, RML2, which is Mr. Hobby 60, lacquer. And the whole cockpit tub color is pretty much um, XF63, German gray. And that was the main color here. The This was just Mr. Service of 1500 black for the fuel tank. And um, yeah, a little bit hand painting here and there. That's essentially it. Um, so just forgot about talking about the colors. Also what I've done is, so looking pretty good. Um, this guy will just, once you've got the instrument panel on, will sit there. And all's left of the instrument panel. And all I've done since um, is lit, well, let me zoom way in so you can see. So tiny, make sure it's in the focus. Um, 
thought about this before, the last part and this part. This is my go-to dry brushing, the Dry Necron Compound by Citadel. And um, again, it's that kind of pasty kind of look. Nice soft brush. I got this guy. It's a Mr. Hobby um, brush. And just dip it in. Wipe off the excess on a paper towel and just dry brushed over the instrument panel. And you can see we've hit all the high points and around all the instrument bezels, we've now got that nice kind of silver look. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it. There you go. See, see how it look we kind of painted in the instrument panel. And so what happens now, hopefully, when we put the um, the decals on, hopefully they're gonna sit inside and um, you'll still 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 see the silver around it. Um, fingers crossed is the game plan. So decal time. I've got to put one every single little hole here and we'll see how it looks then. And um, yeah, almost done. All right, as you can see, we are done with the cockpit and um, let me talk you through the, the instrument panel. So use this to point. Um, so the way to get this in is the um, instrument panel itself. Don't glue it, just you can kind of put slant, push it in and you see where it kind of goes down. It rests on, it, on the end before it kind of drops down. So it rests right here. Um, on both sides, obviously. And then this part, you I tied, applied a little bit of super glue on the bottom and the front, and then put this in, and then pushed the panel back to meet it. And so it's so a panel glued um, with no gap to this guy. So panel in first, resting on the front here, like I said, glue this guy in and push it back and hold it till it dries for a few seconds. And that's how you get it um, all lined up with no gap. And as you can see here, hopefully in the light, uh, the instrument panel if it focuses. There you go. And you see how it's in the light kind of shiny on the instruments. Um, the decals went down no problem at all. Probably five minutes if that, just put them all in. Super easy. To, I put them all individually in. And um, as I mentioned, much Podge, Super Gloss, brilliant, brilliant, um, extreme. Dip it in, toothpick, and just literally just touch each panel, let it flow um, or stick. It's kind of gloopy um, in each of the um, dials, and let it dry, and it gives that glass kind of look. Now it does dry back quite a lot, so I probably want two coats. So I think I'll give it one more little go on some of the bigger instruments. Just give that kind of con convex, concave, sorry, is it concave or convex? Convex, um, kind of, you know, like glass on, on these rather than being flat or slightly receded. Um, so yeah, looking really good. That's the let's go around. Um, final thing, as I gave it a quick little wash, you see it's still a little bit wet with, um, same as the engine, Starship Filth, weathered the same way as the engine. Um, just let it flow you see pick out some of these details and some grimy kind of looking in, you know, inside the cockpit so going around and that is it so oh, dropping it so to go along with the engine again beautiful work a little concern about this again how it bows if it should be like that um i guess next week when we do the fuselage we'll see worst case scenario if it needs to be, you know, flat rather than going up, we can just cut it here um, and on the other side and just bring it down, you know, a fraction of the mill to, to level it off. It's not going to be a big deal at all. But again, a little bit disappointing with no harnesses, but I'm sure we can take care of that later on. But I'm going to touch up some of these instruments um, right here, a little bit more much podge, put it in a box and um, leave this way we work on the rest of it. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this episode uh, and I'll see you next week. Have a good one.